So if you guys are interested in learning how to wire up zoning systems, this should be a good video to get started with. I was on a job yesterday putting in a zoning system on a forced air unit. Um, it was two zones, two zone dampers, smart bypass damper, and two smart thermostats. So on the job, I had stopped for a few minutes and made a short video kind of going over the whole layout of the wiring on this system um, with the guys on the job. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you guys this video that I made on the job, and then we're going to stop along the way at a few key points, and I'm just going to kind of go deeper in the weeds to show you guys a little extra details so that by the end of this video, you will have a you should have a pretty solid understanding of how to, these things work and how to wire them up. So let me just go ahead and start playing the video, and let's get started. We're wiring up an EWC zoning panel. Okay, we got our power switch coming here. We got 120. We have our transformer. We have two things we're powering off of this transformer. We're powering the board itself and we're going to power the damper. Yeah, that's the bypass. Damper. All right, so let me just start right here. So whenever you're installing a zoning system like this, you need a dedicated transformer to power it. Uh, you don't want to steal power off of the unit itself. Um, because you're going to be running zone dampers off of this thing. We have a smart bypass damper in this case. We have two smart thermostats. So, I mean, that's a lot to add on to a system. So, you put a dedicated transformer in. And the way I, you wire these transformers in, you want to make sure they're wired in so that when you shut off the switch for the furnace or the air handler, whatever the case may be, the transformer loses power as well. So, you're wiring it in after the switch. So, this is right out of the manual for the EWC control system. And you can see right here the transformer. This is where we're running our power to for the board. All right, this power here that's coming in, that's going to power our zone dampers, which is right here. It's, let's continue on with the video. Up here, this is where your power is coming into the board, RNC. Over here, you have your thermostat connection. Over here, so we have common or white for heating. We're not using O and B because we're not doing a heat pump yellow for cooling, red power, green fan. So it's normal like we typically do it. And that's our second zone there, same exact thing. So this is going down to our thermostats. Okay, so basically how systems are typically wired is the unit itself sends power out on an R terminal to the R terminal on the thermostat. The thermostat returns that 24 volts back to the unit um, to activate whatever mode it's calling for. So if it were calling for heating, it would send 24 on the W uh, wire. If it was for cooling, it would be Y and so forth. So looking at these, the drawing here out of the manual for the zoning panel, you could see right here, this is where our thermostats get hooked up. All right, and here we have our R terminals that go down to and feed our thermostats. So now the power that comes from these R terminals that's getting sent to the thermostat comes from the R terminals over here on the left side. Now you'll see that this says system right here, and that is your furnace or your air handler or whatever you're connecting this up to. So this wiring here goes between the zoning panel and the actual unit itself. So all you're really doing is matching up the terminals G to G, Y to Y, and so forth. So the transformer inside the unit sends 24 volts out on the R terminal. The zoning panel receives that on the R terminals here on the, where it says system. It sends that 24 volts over to the R terminals here where you connect your zoned thermostats. And from there, it goes down to the thermostats. Thermostats call for heating or cooling, sends it back up to the zoning panel, and then relays that back to the system, which goes back to the furniture of the air hammer. So it's a one big loop. All right, so let's get back to the video. Now over here are our zone dampers. So number one here is common. Number two there, that's power open the damper. And number three, that's, uh, I mean, number six is power closed. So it's one, four, six, okay? Now this is an ND damper. So when you look at the manual here, this, uh, this comes with the uh, dampers. It shows you the wiring configuration for different types of dampers. So this one we got here is ND. So you can see here, uh, one is common, goes to M1. Four is power open, goes to M4, and six is power closed, goes to M6. So we're not using M2 on this. So when we go back to the panel, right, we 
have M1 common, M4 power open, M6 power closed. So this is going to our zone one damper. That's going to our zone two damper. All right, so going back to the zone panel drawing here, we have our thermostat off of this one zone here. Um, the R is going to send power down to the thermostat. Let's say the thermostat calls for heat. It's gonna send 24 volts back up to the panel here on this W terminal. And when that W terminal gets powered, it is going to send power out on the W terminal here for your system, which is gonna relay that signal to the furnace itself so that it can gar start going through its startup cycle on heating mode. And it is also going to send a signal out on M4 for the zone one motor. Um, so that is the power open, right? So when we get a signal for heating on that particular zone from that thermostat zone one, the zone one damper is going to get powered at M4 to open up the damper so that we have a free path for the air to flow to that zone that's calling for heat. Now, when the thermostat satisfies, it's going to kill that 24 volt signal to the zoning panels W terminal here where your thermostat gets hooked up. That will isolate the 24 volts going to the furnace telling the furnace to shut down and the zoning panel is going to then send power out on the M6 terminal to the zone damper to power it closed. So you have one power to open it and then you have another power to close it. And this whole arrangement plays out with each zone. So if you have a second thermostat calling for heat, it's gonna do the same thing. It's going to power in on this W, it will power the furnace on if it's not already on, and then it will send a power open signal to the zone damper on the zone two motor. And then we have all our connections here that go to the furnace and they get wired in down below here. So it's normal wiring like we always do. The green on a fan, we got the blue and white for common because that white is coming from the condensing unit. We got the white for heat. We have the red and yellow for cooling. It's going out to the condensing unit, and then we got the red for power. Okay, so the wiring inside the furnace itself, this particular unit had an evaporator coil on it, so it was a furnace with an air conditioning system attached to it. So we had our standard wiring. We had the green wire to run the fan. We had the white wire for heat. We had a blue wire for common because we have smart thermostats running on this thing. We have the yellow wire for cooling and the red wires to power. And we had two common wires because one of the commons goes out to the condensing unit to turn on the outdoor unit on a call for cooling and it has to make it way back to the board to complete the circuit. So we had that red wire connected where the yellow wire was and that is the signal that goes out to the condensing unit to pull in a contactor and that white wire coming back onto common was just the completion of that circuit. So when you look at these, uh this bypass damper here. All right, we got our two power wires coming in, 24 volts. And when you look, and you can see here, we have a uh, probe that goes in. You see where it says airflow on there with an arrow? Mm -hmm. All right, that airflow is going this way in the ductwork. So there's a probe in there, it's shaped like an L and it's facing like inwards towards the airflow. So when the air blows through it, we're gonna attach a tube here and that's gonna get attached up to our damper here. And we have another one that is coming off the return. So again, we have another probe here. Airflow is going that way because the return's going back into the unit. And that is going to have a tube coming off of it going back to that damper as well. Now basically what a bypass is, um, when you have a zone system, you have you know, multiple dampers in the trunk work. 
um, at some point you're not going to have all systems calling at the same time you could have if like in, in a two zone system for example if only one zone is calling half of your trunk work is going to remain closed so when your unit is running at full speed and it only has half the trunk system to push through you're going to get a lot more static pressure on the system and what that does is it puts a lot of wear and tear on the motor um, and it can also make the system very loud you start hearing that air rushing through the ducts and you know people can hear it blowing out of there like crazy so to combat those problems we put in a bypass system so all this is it's a piece of trunk that comes off of the supply prior to the zone damper so if both zone dampers are closed this air can still travel through that trunk and it goes through this powered bypass damper and it gets fed right back into the return box going right back into the unit so it's just one big ducted loop on the unit itself so the way these things work when you have one zone closed and one zone calling the static pressure of the system increases now as you're about to see in this video i show you where the probes for these bipamp dampers go so that they can read positive and negative pressure on both sides of the unit and it's tubing that goes right back to the bypass damper and the bypass damper can actually read the static pressure and make adjustments on opening or closing that damper based on that static pressure. So if you have one zone closed, one zone open and the static pressure is higher, that bypass damper will open, allow the air to go through the zone that it's calling for. But all that extra static pressure can be relieved by going through the bypass and back into the return to continue looping around. When the other zone opens, when you have both zones open, the static pressure drops, the bypass damper senses that drop, and it closes the damper so that all the air can now go through the entire duct system to feed all the zones. So I hope you guys found that somewhat helpful. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment in the section below. I usually answer them. Thanks for watching.